Hello everyone. Today, we're making dub techno on the Korg Volca sample. Let's go. The first sample I'll load up is a piano sample, and we want something kind of low-pitched and dissonant. So I've got this piano sample on slot 8. I'm going to tune that way down by holding function and lowering the speed. Let's go to minus 12 and hear how that sounds. Pretty good, it's got a nice long tail, so I think that's going to work. I'm going to put that on the very first step. As you can hear, it plays for most of the sequence. Now what I wanna do is take out some of that high end and give it a sort of a wah effect. To do that, I'm actually going to use the high cut filter here. So I'm going to turn this all the way down and I'm going to turn on motion sequencing by hitting function, motion sequencing on, and I'm going to press the record button. While record is enabled, I'm going to play the track, and as I play it, I'm going to turn up that high cut filter. As you can hear, it's all the way down. And once it plays, I'm going to turn it up. Not quite what I want. So to clear that out, I'll hit function, clear motion sequencing. Let's turn this filter down again, and hit record, hit play. There we go. With each note, you can hear that filter slowly opening as the sequence plays through. Next, let's get some percussion going. Let's start with our kick drum. I've got my kick drum sample loaded up in slot one and I've got it loaded up onto 1, 5, 9, and 13, a basic 4 on the floor sequence. In dub techno, I've noticed that the kick drum tends to be a little more subdued. Let's take out a little bit of that high end. And let's reduce the decay a little bit. And how about we pitch it down? Reduce that decay a little more. Let's hear how this sounds with the piano sample. I've got my hi-hat sample loaded up in slot 3. It almost sounds a little bit more like a shaker than a hi-hat, but I think this sound works really well with the dub techno track. Let's hear how that sounds with the kick and the piano. A little harsh, I'm going to reduce some of that high end a little bit. And bring down the decay to make it a little more short and snappy. Next, let's add a clap or a snare. I've got this snare sample loaded up into slot two. And I'm just going to put that on steps five and 13. Let's listen to the snare with the kick, the hi-hat, and the piano. Good, we've got a really basic beat going so far. Let's add a little bit more groove to this by adding another hi-hat. This second hi-hat sample I'm hoping is going to give our track a little bit more swing. So I've got another hi-hat sample loaded up into slot four pretty similar to the one in slot three, except this one's a little bit more high pitched. I'm going to put this hi-hat on steps four, 13, 14, and 16. Let's listen to all of these together. Nice, I think it makes our track a little bit more interesting. Now let's get some bass going. I've got this sort of synth sample loaded up into slot five. It's a little high pitched for a bass note. So I'm going to hold down function and reduce the speed. This will bring my pitch down. I'm not exactly sure which pitch the piano sample is in. So what we need to do is get those two to match. So I'm going to solo out the piano by hitting function and 
solo and hit slot eight. And I'm also going to unmute the bass sample in slot five. I'm going to put this bass note on the one, five, nine, and 13, just so it'll play continuously and I can tweak the parameters as we listen. Let's adjust. I think pitch wise, it's actually okay. I think what we need to do is maybe bring the high frequency down. And I think we can maybe adjust the start point. Sounding a little more like a regular bass. Let's increase the attack slightly so that it's not so harsh at the beginning of the sample. Sounding a lot better. So let's remove our current bass pattern and insert something more exciting. I'm going to put the bass on three, six, 11, and 13. Let's hear how that sounds. Doesn't sound like much so far, but let's listen to it with our percussion. I'm going to unmute all of these. Nice. I think that bass has some good bounce to it. Let's add a few more elements. I noticed a lot of dub techno has sort of like a low pitched pad in the background, something very subtle. So I found another piano sample that I think will work well and I've got it loaded into slot six. Now you might be thinking that's not low pitched at all. Well, let's pitch it down by using function and speed. Let's try 12 semitones. Maybe that'll work. I'm going to just go ahead and put that on every other step so we can hear how the pitch matches up with our other piano sample and the bass and we can adjust as needed. I'm going to mute our percussion just so I can solo out the bass and the two piano samples. A little harsh. Let's lower that high cut frequency. Let's lower the pitch a little bit. I think where we had it actually works pretty well. It's not exact, but it's good enough. I think what would sound really good is if we made this more like a one shot with some echo. I could use the loop function to do that, but one workaround is to just turn on our motion sequencing by clicking function, motion sequencing on, hitting the record button. So as the sequence plays through, I'm just going to decrease the volume, giving it that echoey sort of effect. Let's give it a try. I was a little late there. Let's clear that motion sequencing by clicking function, motion sequencing clear, and let's give that another shot. Not bad. Again, it's not exact, probably because we've got the swing turned up a bit. Now let's hear how this sounds with our percussion. Another element we should consider is sort of like an organ stab. I've got one loaded up into slot nine. And what I'll do first is pitch it down. Everything else is at about minus 12. So that's where I'm going to pitch down this one. Let's hear how it sounds with all of our other samples so far. I'm going to put this on steps 14 and 15, so it just plays real quick at the very end of the sequence. Mm -hmm. 
I like it. I think that the decay is a little too long. I want this to be a little shorter. And I'm also going to add some reverb to it to give it more of an atmospheric feel. So let's play this through and as I play I'll make some adjustments. What I'm doing is shortening the length. I'm also going to shorten the start point. Let's try shortening the decay a little bit. There we go. I think we could use one more percussive element. I found this knife sharpening sample, which I've got in slot 10, and I'm not going to use it like a knife sharpening sample because that would sound kind of weird. But what I can do is I can turn this sample into a perk. So let's start by shortening the length so that it plays just the very beginning of the sample. I think this also needs to be pitched down. I'm not sure by how much. Sounding pretty good. We might even shorten our decay a bit. Okay, not bad. I'm going to put this sort of percussive sound on steps 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, and 13. Let's hear how that sounds. Let's make it a little more atmospheric by turning on reverb. So I'll click function, reverb, and my sample. There we go. We've got a pretty basic but solid dub techno track. Now let's jam a little bit. I'm going to mute all of my percussion. In fact, I'm only going to have the piano sample loaded up. Gonna turn, I'm gonna mute my kick, turn the high cut all the way down, unmute my kick, slowly bring that high pass filter up. Let's unmute our hi hat. Got something going. Let's turn on our clap. Turn off our kick, add the bass, put our kick back on. Let's add some more percussion. In fact, I'm going to turn that down a little in volume. at our pad, turn on our motion sequencing, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next.